Welcome to the Men of Action podcast, where we bring on stellar men, the finest of fine men who overcome many struggles in their life to get to the point where they're at. But not just that. Also, they have a mission and that they strive to help other men who are struggling and people in their lives as they work to impact their families, community, and those that they impact them around them daily. I'll be on your host, Zach. And I got James with me. James, we're all the way from Australia. G'day. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how are you, how you doing today, James? Oh man, I'm uh, I'm really good, really good, man. I'm excited to be here. This is my uh, my first podcast. I'm popping my cherry. Nice. Not only are you this is gonna be your first podcast, but you're also number twenty five, so a quarter away from our goal of having a hundred videos. So, hey, Cam, I'm so happy to have Congrats. you and celebrate that. And the first guest from Australia, because first international, so a lot awesome. of first here, a lot of good things. Awesome, man. Yeah, exciting. Congrats on 25 apps. Ah, thank you. Thank you. So, James, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so I'm uh, from Australia, obviously, as you can as you can hear. Um, I live in a little country town called Mwilumba, uh, which is in sort of the east coast of Australia. And I live here with my wife and our two daughters. Um, it's extremely cold here at the moment. If you can't tell, we've got about four layers on. Um, but yeah, man, so a little bit about me, I, uh, I currently work in uh, a high ticket sales environment, mm -hmm. um, but my true passion has always been within the, the health and fitness industry, um, left high school and became a personal trainer straight away just because I was good at sport and, um, it was the only, <laughs> the only logical thing to do is, Hey, might as well spend all day in a gym. It's pretty close to being an athlete. So true. I'll, um, I'll do that. And, uh, yeah. That's lots of lots of cool stuff along the way. I'm um, what I'm building at the moment is I'm building out a uh, a holistic journal, I suppose you could call it, for men, um, called the Better Man Plan, and and uh, posting a lot about health, parenting, marriage, uh, just really my experiences on Twitter at the moment. And um, yeah, uh, that's how we met. And uh, yeah, I'm enjoying the journey so far. That's awesome. So, what sport did you play? I'm going to take a guess. Rugby. Yes, bang on. How'd you tell? <laughs> uh, typically look like a uh, you, you look like you're a pretty big guy, so I just figured <laughs> I could either go with rugby or football. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Well, you you hit the nail on the head, right? Um, rugby, yep. So I started playing rugby when I was four years old. Oh, wow. Um, and played pretty much all the way up until I was 24. 24, 25. I'm now now 28. Mm -hmm. um, actually, funny you say rugby. I didn't, man, I didn't really did not expect you to get that. Get being an American. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I actually played rugby in America for a bit. I oh, lived in um, yeah. I lived in Austin, Texas, and oh, okay. played for the Austin Blacks. Yeah, it was awesome. awesome. I loved it. Yeah. So, what position did you play? Played fly half or fullback. Oh, do you know that man? Not really. No, <laughs> I mean, I've seen the, I've seen a rugby match before. Cool. I don't actually know all the positions too. I just know they all kind of get into a hurdle, and one person passes the ball, and they just keep going for it. I says, yeah, and they like, don't stop. They just keep going until the whistle blows. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, man. So yeah, that was my whole life. Um, and then this life got busy, I guess, and. Priorities changed and yeah. So kind of switching topics a little bit, how did the um, the holistic kind of journal like develop from? Mm. So I'd always I'd always been into journaling. I actually got started just with just with a really sort of plain, let me see if I've got one out here. Sort of not this one, but a plain simple journal like that that I just sort of do, you know, you can pick those up from any sort of stationary shop for a few bucks. Right. Um, I just did, you know, some pretty standard prompts, like, you know, what am I grateful for today? Um, what, what can I improve on tomorrow? Stuff like that. That was the start of, of my journaling journey. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I ended up using, um, like a lot of, a lot of other sort of high performance, like ones like high performance journal, yeah. uh, best self co those types of journals as well. And what I was finding was that they were all really, uh, they had a specific focus about business success. Mm. 
all these types of things. And I am very holistically minded and I like to be a good dad. I like to be a good husband. I like to be fit myself. And I also like to be successful in whatever it is I'm trying to achieve, like from Mm a, a, a business standpoint or a, um, project standpoint whatever it may be i like i like to do it all and so i wanted to create something like it like a journal that could embody all those things because mm. i was finding that when i was using these particular journals and this is probably just something maybe i did wrong or it, like this is obviously just my experience but um you know your energy goes where where attention where energy flows where attention goes mm. and so when i had journals that were only focusing on a certain aspect um, I feel like the others were lacking. And then, you know, that's, that's a good yeah. point that you mentioned that, yeah. Yeah, and because then, you know, and then the evidence would show up of that, you know, maybe, you know, my wife might express that she's not, you know, feeling the love. Um, my kids mm-hmm. might be acting up. I look in the mirror, I'm like, shit, I've gotten a bit pudgy. Whatever it may be, you know what I mean? And then, um, so that, that was the inspiration behind the Better Man Plan is that it incorporates all of those things. Um, if you've heard about the, um, the four male archetypes, like King, Warrior, Magician, Lover, it's, um, it's a, a little bit of a spinoff of that, I guess you could call it, because it embodies all of those archetypes that I feel make a, a, a complete man. Yeah, no, definitely. And that's what I try to take too, is more of that holistic approach that you got to tackle the mind, body, and soul. Mm. And tackle everything is if you only tackle on one, you neglect the others. Yeah. I love how you worded that. I never heard that word before. Like energy flows where there's the uh where the attention goes. Yeah. Exactly. That's, that is I've never heard it that way. I mean, mostly you talk about like energy and things like that. It's like, you know, how you view yourself and like how you want to have good energy and good vibes and how you want to kind of radiate through that. But I like that way, because if you because your attention does go that way, where your thought process leads you to. Exactly. Exactly right. And if it's the only thing that you're seeing, like if a lot of a lot of dudes they'll say, "Ah, oh, like I don't have time to do like all those extra little things that yeah. my wife needs." But dude, first off, bullshit. <laughs> Second off, it's just because you're not thinking about it. Yeah. The, the, like you're you've got energy going to it now because your wife's kicked up a fuss that you, she doesn't feel loved. Now you're thinking about it. Right. And now you're going to put energy towards it. So why don't you do that every day? It's true. Or why don't or you, you do one do little thing? Problem. Yeah, exactly. Like, why don't you do one little thing every single day that is going to make sure that all these, you know, boxes are ticked? Yeah. Because um, we do that. We do that with with business, with our work, with our jobs, like every, everything that's outside of our family. We do that. We're ticking boxes every day. We're making sure that this. SOP is followed and that uh, this email gets sent. But right. when it comes to our our kids and our wives and our health, it's like, ah, that'll sort itself out. It's all good. It's all yeah, like unfortunately, it's only when something bad happens does like the guy realize like, oh, now I got to do something. Exactly. And becomes exactly more right. reactive and your plan is more proactive, which I love. 100%. Because it, like, it feels good, man. Like it feels yeah. good to have, to for your kids to love you and for your, your wife to love you and to be ripped and to just you know to be ticking all those boxes and to be consistently of service which i think you know is is a great way to just as describe a dad mm-hmm. is just being of service all the time um it feels good well to have that especially if you're going to put that energy and that attention towards being a good dad and mm. doing everything that it takes like a lot of times you know you hear this you know, at least in America, we hear about the standard of, you know, the dad comes home, sits on the couch and puts on sports. I don't know mm-hmm. if something similar to that of, you know, grabbing a beverage and or going to the pub. Exactly. Yeah. Finish work, go have a few beers after work, come home just before the kids are going to sleep and they're, they're pissed off because they haven't seen you all day and they want your attention, but you don't really want to give them attention yeah. and you put them to bed. Your wife needs you, but you don't really want to see her because you're tired because you went to the pub. Like, it's just a terrible cycle. So what do you think that came about? Because that's because I know when we had our connection call, we met for the first time, which was amazing because I got to learn a little bit more about how similar we are, even though we're mm-hmm. in different countries, how there's an issue of absent fathers and fathers that aren't as present, you know, in today's time compared to a little bit of time back where they're mm-hmm. a little bit more present, a little bit more available. But, 
you know, Sole and Sole became more of the common for the for the man not to be as involved into his family and just be absent, just like a body. Mm -hmm. I think um, it's a really tricky one because 98% of the time history just keeps on repeating itself. Yes. And people are, people are dealt cards sometimes that aren't favorable. Correct. Whether they've come from a broken home, whether they've had but whether their family isn't necessarily broken, but their their family dynamic isn't healthy. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, that pattern more often than not will repeat itself. Right. And so I think you know, obviously, it's just more, um, it's more more uh, paramount these days, just because there's so much exposure for everything that happens in the world. Yeah. Um, a lot of people sharing stories, and and I think yeah, it's a hard question to answer. But I think lack of ownership mm. is a big one. You know, a lot of dads think that you know it's uh, it's just the way it is. Everything's meant to be hard. Kids, uh, kids are always meant to be a hassle, but it's just simply not meant to be that way. I think um, a lot of dads become dads for the right reasons, mm -hmm. but then they actually lose themselves along the way as well. Mm. Yeah, because another common commonality that we had is that there's a not a, a huge community for men. Yeah, that's right, and I mean, and it makes sense because, like, men are usually the like the the workers, um, mm -hmm. particularly when the you know the mom's having the baby and going through the later stages of pregnancy. The that role and responsibility of the father does um, increase, and then uh, you know post baby is is really hard, man, for for dads, and there there's not much support there because when you think about it, I realised this. Um, and I'm, I'm grateful that I, you know, just saw the positive in it and then I didn't really have any attachment to it. But when, um, when a baby's born, you're not, you're not going to be with your wife properly for the next three to four months. Oh, wow. Because all their attention is going to the baby. Okay. And at that particular point, I feel as if a lot of men will resent their babies and resent oh, wow. their wives. That's how I've experienced some stuff play out as well. Um, so not in myself, but with other people. Right. Um, and it's a it's a it's a really tough pill to swallow if you're not ready for it. And if there isn't that true connection with your like with the wife and the mother of your child, then that'll I think that'll play out a lot more than what people think. And at that point, that's when community becomes really important because if you are feeling isolated, you are feeling resentful, and you've got no one to talk about. It's just going to fester. Yeah. Faster inside, and then the relationships will just suffer afterwards. So, to summarize that, it's um, it's lack of connection, mm. lack of connection with partners. That's the main thing. You know, it's something that I've, you know, never really heard before. That point of view that you could actually begin to resent the baby because you're not. That took, that took your wife away. Yeah. All their yeah. all their attention. I mean, you know, babies require a lot of attention, so you know yeah. that. The next three months, you know, things are going to be kind of rocky. You know, the babies, and you always hear about the babies not sleeping well, you know, yep. deprivation, couples yep. have a little bit less patience. You know, families don't live together anymore where they could kind of all watch the baby and all take care of it, you know, because everyone's yeah. kind of the two parent household now, you know, have more. Yeah. Um, so I can, I understand that point, but I never thought of it from a man's standpoint. That's probably because I don't have any kids at this point. Exactly. And I mean, it's, it's not, you know, because again, people aren't men aren't encouraged to to speak up about that stuff, and it's yeah. You know, you almost feel a little bit guilty for for feeling like that if you do. I assume. Um, I, I'm saying that just due to other feelings. I didn't have those feelings of resentment or anything like that, but I assume there would be guilt um, associated with that, which leads to not speaking up, which leads mm -hmm. to again it festering and just manifesting in in different ways, like like frustration, like laziness, yeah, all that other stuff. Yeah, I mean that's that's the one problem that like guys have is that we don't we don't feel like it's safe to open up about problems because then can they trust us? Because especially if they want us to lead, can we be open and honest about our own problems? Or you know, sometimes we're so focused on helping everyone else that we neglect our own needs. Yeah, absolutely. And then it's um yeah, it's the paradox of um of fatherhood. You now you need to be you need to be your best self before uh before you can be of service to other people yeah completely completely agree that's 
got a lot of wisdom. Obviously, your daughter is like what seven? You said. Yeah, yeah, about to, she'll turn seven soon over the next couple of months. Um, yeah, and yeah, I don't, I don't even know where like people say that to me a lot, and I don't really know where it comes from because I had I had her really young, like I was only mm-hmm. twenty one, just turned twenty two. I didn't know what the hell I was doing, but um, all I knew was that I wanted to be a good dad. And so that's that's just been my North Star ever since. You know, I think that's great because I think a lot of dads do want to be good, you know, good fathers. I don't really know anyone who says, yeah, I want to be a terrible father. Most, exactly. of, it's, most of it's like, I don't want to be like my own father who was yeah. never there. I mean, I remember I had a realtor one time. Um, Tell me this. This is, has to be like one of the, the saddest stories I've heard. So he always wanted to play ball with his dad. His dad didn't really want to play ball. So now he's like, let's say in his 30s, you know, maybe early 40s at this point in time, and he's doing like a company uh, softball game, right? And he has some extra time. Hey, dad, you want to throw some ball? Dad's like, no, I'm good. And so even like as this like older guy, that still hurt him. Mm. And um, I don't think he has any kids. He might be trying to have a kid now because uh, we're not in as much contact, but a little bit. But it's just like just hearing that story, just like now it's going on two years ago. That just like broke my heart. I was like, oh, my God, like, are you OK? <laughs> yeah, it's brutal, man. Some um, some dads just they just don't understand the, the impact that they have on their kids. They think that they have little impact when they are absolutely everything. Yeah. So have you coached other men? I know you're trying to get into more like the health and fitness. Yeah. So I, well, when I was a PT, I coached, coached men all the time. Okay. Um, yeah. So they were, they were, that was sort of my typical clientele, usually just sort of middle-aged dudes who are wanting to get, uh, you know, a little bit more active, um, lose their, lose the bit of the belly, that type of stuff. Um, Back then, I was only really working on the, you know, on the health side of things. I wasn't doing as right. much holistic stuff. So it's um, I'm excited to be able to do that and to be able to offer it to people because I firsthand have seen how important a, a holistic uh, approach is to yeah. health. You know, that's that's the one thing I never really understood, and I it might come from a source of pride, but you always hear about the medical versus like holistic approaches. And they're always going to be at, you know, at odds with each other. I'm like, why are we always like focus on extremes? And I know that's how people are. We like extremes, but it's like, where can that balance be between, you know, medical, because there are medical conditions and do need to be treated in medicine, but then also tackling from a holistic, whether that's teas, scents, oils, uh, acupuncture is a huge one and all these different remedies that have been proven over the thousands of years to be effective that we're finding out today people are lazy oh. people want quick fixes man that's, that's true um that's you know you true. can you can pop a pill and your headache's gone in five minutes yeah that's true i understand the the efficiency and you know, you know for people that aren't willing to slow down that's yeah great great yeah. option for them because they can be fixed and they're ready to go and uh, there's no ownership again. Mm. No ownership. It's like uh, I've got a headache. No, I wonder what's causing my headache. Maybe it's the ten coffees I've drunk today, or I haven't drunk any water in three weeks. It's you know, it's those types of thoughts that people should be having, but they don't. That's why um, there is a bit of, I suppose, backlash if, if you could call it that against the holistic yeah. side of things. But end of the day, like I don't even go too far into the into the um you know like essential oils and remedies and stuff like that when i say holistic i'm talking yeah. more so you know mind body spirit mental okay. physical emotional spiritual okay um that's what i view as holistic because they're again back to those archetypes of king warrior magician lover um it all comes it all flows it all flows together everything's energy especially within us self <laughs> we're just walking energy um and it all plays a massive part into, you know, movement is just one aspect of it. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to have to look into that. I've never heard of that before, so I'm going to have to send me the information on that so I can put it in the description so that way 
we can get that more information out there. The more information, the better, because we know knowledge is power. You know, you know what yeah, you man. know, you know what you know, and you don't know what you don't know. But it's exactly. hard to figure that out. So, how do you help like a guy like obtain that ownership? Because that can be so hard. Like, because um, I don't know if you follow Nate Norman at all, but he mm-hmm. did. He does like uh, weekly motivationals, and he talked about that how. You know, you blame everything else, but the finger doesn't come to here mm-hmm. quite first. Yep. How do you get someone to take ownership? <clears throat> I think it's there's a mixture of things. Mm-hmm. There's certainly a, a, a skill that a, that a coach has, um, just in terms of like we said, it's um, men don't do it because they don't feel safe. Mm. Okay. Um, it's scary taking ownership of certain things. And if you don't feel safe, you're not, you're not going to do it. So from my point of view, it's, um, it's, 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 uh, you know, holding space for that. It's, it's asking good questions, but it's also holding the standard as well. It's been like, you know, if, if, if I can sense that someone is blaming other things, then I'll challenge them. That's, that's how you get them to take ownership. Eventually it's like a muscle. Yeah. Um, you know, if you get if you want to get good at bench press, you got to do bench press. Right. If you uh, want to have more integrity and take more ownership, you have to start taking more ownership. And so, what my job is is more so as a I don't really like calling myself a coach because everyone knows what to do, mm-hmm. everyone knows why they need to do it. So my job is to essentially more so guide people to making those decisions for themselves. Yeah, one word I like to use is strategic because I have to, I believe in the same thing. Everyone knows that if you want to lose weight, you got to have less calories. Everyone at this point knows cigarettes and, you know, pop is not good for you. And, you know, different carbohydrates can depend on what you're using them for. So obviously if you're more of a runner, that can be more of a benefit, but still a specific kind. I'm not talking about your processed foods and things like that. Mm. So I think everyone knows at this point, but what they a lot of people kind of lack is the strategy of how to do it. So I always allude to like the grocery store. Like most people don't realize that grocery store is designed purposely. And a lot of these people, they study human behavior. They know what people look for. So what they've done is they put out, at least in America, I don't know how the grocery stores are set up in Australia, but here you have all the healthy food on outside the aisle, but inside the aisle is where all the, you know, the candies, the chips yep. and all the processed food that's harmful to you. And when you go and you go buy, you know, when you leave, then you got the candy, right? Right. When you go to checkout, you got the candy, right? So that's kind of like an impulse buy because, oh, I go want some candy. But that yeah. candy bar, you know, it's a tiny little thing, has 180 calories. So you have to be on the treadmill for at least an hour to burn that off. Yeah, absolutely. They're smart, those people. <laughs> oh, my gosh. They're, I mean, there's a whole psychology to it. There's even with colors, like yellow yeah. makes you hungry. That's why McDonald's is like yellow and red because those are foods that stimulate hunger mm. yeah clever clever people <laughs> yes yes they are i even like read an article where i guess like the mcdonald's m is more like a breast because again it's stimulating more hunger <laughs> <laughs> i've never thought of that it's weird looking i wrote the article is like head you know as smart as just like it yeah because if you think about it, it's more of a curvature yeah 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 m versus like an actual how an m could be so i was like Oh man, now you got me thinking, is this really true? Like, at least because these people are smart. <laughs> yeah, they are, man. <laughs> so that's why I always go with the notion that everything is done with intention. There's a purpose behind it. So there's a purpose behind you not taking ownership. There's a purpose behind it is can you, you know, rid yourself of that pride and take that ownership? Can you feel vulnerable and open, which is a strength? to acknowledge that there's areas that you have to improve upon and then take those. So, mm. but I love your mindset on that though. I think it's very true. People know what to do. It's just, they need help how to do it. And they need yeah. encouragement. There's not a lot of encouragement for guys. There's I really see, not, a lot, of, support, not a lot of programs or anything for guys, really. Yeah, I think there's 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 lots of different kinds of program, like so many health and fitness programs out there, which is great yeah. because it it gets it's it serves its purpose. It gets people from maybe they're extremely overweight to actually being confident in their own body again, right. which is great. 
and that that is a necessary first step is to feeling mm -hmm. confident and loving yourself right um those people though will eventually yearn for more particularly if they've got um wife family yeah those kinds of things or um, someone just believe in them like you like when you're yeah. like people are just knowing that someone's in your corner that's going to cheer yeah. you on yeah and there's there's just there's lots of blockages a lot of people have blockages whether that's oh, yeah. um physical blockages mental emotional blockages um yeah, I'm uh, sort of delving deep into into trauma and, and how that gets stored within our nervous systems and how it how it blocks and like it's it's crazy, man. Um, oh, so, I do this for a living and my day job. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's wild, and so I think you know, like eventually, I'd love to love to be able to help people with that as well in some aspect once i um, become competent in it yeah. um, but for now it's it's more so just yeah as i said being that guide and, and showing people how to get from a to b and that it is possible and that it can be done yes well 100 and you know the journal that you develop is a tool yep. and it's practicing it daily like we've been talking about it's practicing it daily it's fine-tuning it and knowing it's gonna be a benefit versus Man, this ain't gonna work. I tried this program. I tried that program. I guess I mean I might as well give it a shot, but I don't know how good it's gonna be. Mm. So yeah, yeah, it's just it's just little wins every single day. Absolutely. And that, if you just keep keep stacking those wins, like like I think Will Smith says, just keep building brick by brick, and yeah. uh, eventually you have a wall. Absolutely. You know the question, and then through experience, you learn how to build a you know a good wall. You know, squirrels, when they're babies and they get a little bit older, they don't know how to nest. They make terrible nests, but they figure it out because that's just what they know to do. They know to build. You know, when something doesn't go well, to keep on at it. And then eventually they will build a better nest. Yep. But So it's just, you know, that's why you need to have that knowledge. You got to have that wisdom and you got to have that good guy that you can trust and, you know, to find a mentor, find a coach, find somebody who not only lives, a, you know, talks a life, but also lives a life. Cause it's very easy to give suggestions and everything, but if you're not living it, then are you just talking at that point? Are you just, you know, saying what you know works cause it sounds good because you can, you can really hear in someone's voice and, and their emotions when they recognize that need to change and then to improve and how they go on that journey, you can just hear it of the struggles, how hard it was, how it took not just days, weeks, but years. Mm. So. Yeah, hundred percent, man. And um, you know, I remember you know, talking, talking. I talked to so many men who were struggling, you know, with their relationships, and um, because one of one of my um closing roles at the moment is for a, a men's development program, and mm. uh, a lot of it's more so focused on helping dudes who are finished with with relationships. Um, or are struggling with their marriages and stuff like that. And uh, so many of them are, they're hurting, but they're comfortable still. Yeah. And it's, it's they're actually the people that won't step in, that won't do the work. It's, it's the dudes that are, the pain of staying the same is great, is, is greater than, uh, than doing the changing and doing the work. Um, and unfortunately, yeah, it does get to that stage for some people. Um, but it's just about, you know, finding out what's going on. That's that's what my job is. Find out what's going on. Is there a solution? Yep. Sweet. Let's let's move towards it. Yeah. And make it things into manageable steps that they can do it to feel success. So yep. a lot of times people don't take time. And I, I talked a lot about this in my own practice, is that people don't take time to define what is success to them. You know, they, they'll, they'll say success what they think success is, like having a million dollars in the bank, you know, having a, a great job that pays X amount of money and like a smoking hot wife, right? But they don't take time to really define what is success for them. They're focused on what success is for everybody else. That's how what I found. Mm -hmm. So when you take time to actually define what is success and then have achievable and manageable steps to it, that's when I find people actually begin to feel happy for the first time. Yeah, hundred percent, because they're clear on on what their vision is. Yeah, and that's the key thing is their vision. You know, I believe it was Roosevelt who said, 
you know, comparisons that thief of joy. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, if you want to be happy, then define what, what, did, what does it take for you happy? Is it losing five pounds? Is it losing 20 pounds? Like, and be honest and real about it to a point where, yeah, you might have to shed a few tears to be that open and honest if that's what it takes, just because that's when you reach that breaking point. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. Yeah, so, I see, so with doing the holistic approach of mind, body, and spirit, do, what kind of do you focus on like a lot of times on meditation as well, especially with reflecting? Yeah, certainly an aspect of it for sure. I think um, I think you can make you can turn everything into a meditation really. Okay. You know, if, you're just staring, if you're staring out the window, like I am now, you could really turn it into a meditation if you if you focus purely on what you're staring at. Ah, um, so people might be meditating versus zoning out then, or maybe a little bit both. Yeah, maybe. maybe well, maybe zoning out can potentially even be a form of meditation as well. Huh, Everyone's different. I would picture um, that zoning out could be. Now, that's an interesting thought. It's only mm. really a form of meditation. I, I think that it's, and it, meditation is. I think it's a form of working in, which is a concept mm. from from Paul Trek. So there's obviously working out, which is going to the gym, exercising. But a lot of people don't work in, which is things that give you energy. Mm. Sometimes zoning out is the most energizing thing you can do for yourself. Mm because you're thinking about nothing. You're not really doing anything. But where a lot of people go wrong is that they'll zone out for two minutes and then they're on their phone. Mm. You gotta zone out for longer. <laughs> you zone out for longer, then, then it'll turn into a, more of a spiritual practice. Um, essentially just the art of doing nothing. It's really important, the art of being bored. Um, that's, so yeah, that's certainly one aspect of it. Um, because it yeah it plays plays a massive part in health for sure. Yeah. Uh, and again, where's your attention being drawn to and focused? And unfortunately, the phones are just the biggest distraction. Even though that's how we met, though, at the same time. So it's like you have this tool that can do great things beyond any comprehension. But then at the same time, if you don't watch it, monitor it, it will consume your whole life. So, I mean, especially with TikTok videos being short and very enticing or like Instagram reels and things like that, where it's like a, a lot of content can be very harmful to you and lead you into different ways. And I can't imagine being a parent now with all the technology out. Hmm. Yeah, it's, um, it's tricky to navigate where we've been. I mean, we've, our daughter doesn't have a phone. She won't have one for a very long time. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have a TV. Okay. That's you something know. you don't hear about often is that someone doesn't have a TV. Yeah. I mean, we just, we're, my wife and I, we were, when we were quite young, we realized we just got into such bad habits, man. Like we'd wake up first thing, turn the TV on and watch the news. And then, uh, we have like two cups of coffee in bed while we watch the news. You know, we'd, uh, <laughs> we'd, uh, this is, and this is just like on the weekend, for example. And then we'd, we'd wake up or we'd get out of bed. We're already awake. We'd get out of bed and we'd maybe have breakfast or something while we still watch TV, okay. uh, watch the morning show and you know, just get sucked into all this nonsense all the time. Um, and then we yeah, really stepped up our digital minimalism, you could call mm -hmm. it, um, when when our firstborn was born. Because we just didn't, yeah, we, we knew that. By then, we'd, we'd read up a lot on the effects that it has on development and all those kinds of things. And we just, yeah, we just didn't really want to have it in our, in our house anymore. So it was, it was a pretty easy decision. And we've um, you know, we've I've obviously got my laptop and stuff. So if we ever right. did want to watch a movie or something, we can chuck it on. Um, but we we do that very rarely. Okay. So what have you noticed between you and your wife uh, from, you know, basically in bed, drinking some coffee, watching the news, you know, to kind of like that detox almost of electronics and how stimulating everything can be? Hmm. It's... um. 
Oh, mornings, mornings are very different now because we don't usually have mornings to ourselves. Um, okay. We usually have a couple of sets of pitter pattering feet into our uh, into our bedroom, and then <laughs> and everyone's in the same bed. So that's usually how, um, at least, how my wife wakes up. Anyway, I'm usually up a bit earlier doing my thing. Uh, um, but I think in particular, it's it's been you know uh, the evenings that have been um, more connected. Okay. You know, that same story of the mornings, you know, we do the same things at night. You now we um, cook dinner, eat dinner while watching TV or a show or something like that, and then go to bed or fall asleep on the couch, then go to bed. Like it's just, it's just terrible. You know, like looking back, it's like, oh, yuck. Um, so now, like, it's just, it's, it's our, we don't, we don't plan to do anything usually, mm-hmm. but it's just, you know, it's just quiet, connected time where we'll, we'll chat about stuff read you know like and sometimes we'll watch a, something on my laptop if we want to um yeah so it's just just more connected i suppose would be the way to summarize it yeah so did you find your relationship improve then since you feel more connected yeah for sure like we've, we've been doing it for a long time now like we've been doing it for well i'd say nearly six years or so okay yeah that's so um yeah we've got, we've got a great relationship Oh, that's beautiful. You don't really hear about that. Typically, it's like, you know, those like old traditional, you know, what our grandparents would be like married 60 plus years is like now it's like you hear about that. You get the same excitement if you hear about someone been married for five years. Yeah. I don't know how <laughs> it became a 12 times difference in oh, no, man. It's crazy. two generations. But, yeah, you know, that's just one of the things that I think if we could really work on improving to build that relationship, to build that family back up i think that's would make a huge huge impact on the world where you would have a lot less absent fathers and more involved fathers where you can change a whole generation 100 percent, man yep it's um and that that you know my um my wife came from you know pretty pretty rough childhood as uh and uh and my my dad was really absent as well um Mm. and so we I think yeah, when our daughter was born, we sort of we didn't even really discuss it, but we were just like, oh, we can't. <laughs> We've both embodied uh, different paths, which has been really exciting. Um, and yeah, it's it's great. It's working out well. Well, I'm so happy to hear that, man. That you are being that game changer, really. That you're breaking like what is so commonly called like a like that generational curse of absent mm-hmm. fathers, where you know your daughter will see what it's like for and to be have an active father involved father a healthy father involved so that way you know she knows what kind of guy to be with one day exactly and that's huge because we do we all drawn to you know people like our families that's what we're used to that's why you always say well you made someone just like father it's like well how could yes. you <laughs> relatively any less because yeah. and honestly because that's what you're used to seeing mm-hmm. so that's why yeah. a lot of times not all the time but a lot of times you'll see that happen or you see the reverse of, I don't want to date this person because they're exactly like my father. So I'm cool with dating someone who doesn't drink. Mm-hmm. You no, know, it's one of those things that people do. I mean, we're shaped by our earlier experiences and throughout life. And it's all about, you know, reconnecting those neurons and everything to make a better life for ourselves, both spiritually, emotionally, and physically. Mm. Yeah, man, 100%. Your daughter. Your daughter will marry someone like you and your, your son will become you. So you got to always think about whether you're being uh, a good role model or not, whether you're someone worth following. Yeah. And I think, you know, a lot of guys are. They just need to see that worth and value within themselves that so many people reject because that's all they know to do is reject it because and I saw this in kids when I used to work with kids is like you had kids who were quote unquote the bad kid and got in trouble all the time. Right. Mm-hmm. And they got labeled the bad kid, of course, which you which kind of broke your heart because, you know, I worked with them. So I knew the backgrounds. I knew the families they came from. And one time this uh, teacher, you know, praised the kid. But unfortunately, it was the wrong type of praise. It was that over excitement that a lot of teachers do. And when something good happens to someone who's not used to doing it, no good to them. You know, I always compare it to a rash that won't go away till you do something. So if you have a rash, you put 
you know, some type of cream on it, right? For some kids, is they have to destroy a whole classroom because they have to prove you wrong. And I mm -hmm. saw that quite a bit of kids would destroy a classroom. And it wasn't all the time they get praised, so you learn how to praise somebody. So those kind of kids, I would say, hey, good job putting in, just like I'm talking now, hey, good job, you know, sitting down and pushing in a chair, you know, appreciate that, did a good job. They kind of look at you, kind of go like this, and kind of still look at you, and, you know, you still acknowledge them. Mm. And you do through those things through increments, and that's what really helps someone feel appreciated. And then eventually, then you can get a little bit excited, but not in the beginning. And so it's the same thing, and you know, adults are just grown up kids. You know, when you, if you have someone who's not used to praise, they would do everything to prove you wrong, mm -hmm. that they are worthless, that they are dumb. And even though they end up fighting that demon on the inside, right? All those negative thoughts and perceptions and intrusive thoughts of themselves. Yeah, it's massive, man. Yeah. It's interesting about that kid. Yeah, well, kids are kids are interesting because they're real, they're honest and blunt. I mean, but if you can break into them, like I had uh, one of my favorite stories I love to share and the most impact I've ever made was there's this kid who was used to fighting and he lived to fight. And one day he was about to get in a fight. He stopped and he said, I need to see Mr. Effing Goodman. <laughs> so you can still make an impact. You just got to figure out how to reach somebody. And that's the moral mm. of the story. You know, got to figure out what makes someone tick and believe in them and support them and know that you're not going to give up on them. And I think that's when breakthrough comes. When when a guy knows that you're there for him for life and you're like legitly there for him, that's when you open up because, you know, it's just a tough world we live in that guys get beat down a lot. Mm -hmm. So mistreated, disrespected, not saying that they, they're innocent, but it's, you know, it's, it's hard brutal it is it's a brutal world it's got to band together hey amen to that man gotta gotta be together that's why they call it the band of brothers right mm -hmm. exactly so as we kind of wrap up today you know what would you want to speak into a guy's life like what would you speak a guy who's lost broken who wants to take ownership how would you speak into him today to give them some level of encouragement someone who's broken you need to find yourself again particularly Ooh. with dads um particularly with dads I'll, I'll say that just because that's my experience and what i can speak on spend so much time being things for other people mm -hmm. for your wife for your kids if you've got multiple and it exacerbates this yeah. um spend so much time doing things and and being a certain way uh for them that you often forget uh you often forget what makes you happy okay so do more things that make you happy <laughs> yeah we did break up a little bit though i don't know if you saw it so we got you know be your true self you know got find it. up again yeah got it i'll go again um we spend a lot of time as as dads uh, being someone for, for someone else, a lot doing other things for a lot of other people, um, wife, kids. And so to find yourself again, you need to figure out what it is that makes you happy and what you enjoy doing, mm. which sounds simple, but it's, it's really a, a really tricky thing to do when you're always geared to be of service to other people. And so do more of what makes you happy. I love it. Love it, man. James, you are a man of action, and thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Give a shout out to James. He just knocked it out of the park. Then this was his first podcast. Seems like he's been doing it for a decade or two. But you know what, James? I'm glad to have you on here. I'm glad to learn from you. Gave me a lot of different thoughts to think about. And just really drawn into really honestly about where am I allowing the energy to flow? Where is it directing the attention? And so I know this video, I know this podcast is going to inspire so many men out there. You know, so go out, go off out with James because he knows what he's talking about. He's got that journal to help you out to live that better life. So DM him, reach him out for his services because he can be, be a, the one to impact your life. And just from hearing his story, where he's come from and how he's changed his life and how he's actually took steps of action, not just talked about it. 
He didn't do the talkie talkie. He did the walkie walkie. And now he's been making a band of brothers. So go follow James. Go support his mission. And let's be a light, you know, making an impact in this world. So you can do it. You can become a man of action. So take those first steps today. Because tomorrow, as we all know, it's not promised. So go shine bright like the stars that you are. All right. Till the next video. Be blessed, y'all.